I'm currently in the process of fitting a remote brake servo to my VW Bug, which hopefully will be the next video. Um, as a consequence, I've been flaring brake pipes that look a little bit like this for the last few days. Um, so I thought I'd take the opportunity while the bench is clear, or, well, as clear as it gets, um, to show you how to flare brake pipes. We'll do the single flare, the double flare. I'll generally show you how to use the brake flaring kit. And yeah, um, I think it's one of those things that people think is hard to do, a bit of a dark art, but it's dead easy. I'll show you how to do it. The first thing you're going to need is some kind of brake flaring kit. Uh, there may be different types in the market, I'm not sure, uh, but this particular one I've been using for over 20 years and it's always given me good results. Um, I will do a search on eBay and put some links in the description below um, if you need to find one. Next, you're going to need some brake tubing. Now, this particular one is copper nickel or cupro nickel. Um, it's one I've always used on my classic air-cooled uh, VW projects. Um, this particular one is 4.76 mil or 3/16th of an inch. Uh, being copper nickel, it's quite malleable, so you can bend it around things. If you get a die or something and bend it around that, you can make relatively tight bends without it crushing. Um, and say so it's easy to work with; it's, it's good to use. Um, you can get other stuff like steel and that, but I've never worked with that, so I'm not sure how well that flares. Um, but being soft copper nickel, again, it flares really, really easily. Um, so it's good for using in the tool that I'm going to be showing you today. Next, you're going to need some brake pipe fittings or nuts, which look a little bit like this. Uh, now, they come into various different sizes, so you need to make sure you get the right ones for your car. Um, if you're a classic air cool guy like me, you're probably looking at a metric 10 mil. Um, but if you're a classic English car guy, you're probably looking at a 3.8 UNF, but you do need to check that before you uh, fit them on your pipes. Now, these ones are for single flares, so they're kind of an open hole all the way through. Uh, so they're quite easy to spot. Um, if, however, you've got something more modern, uh, which would probably be an 8th inch NPT, um, it has like a dome inside the end um, for a double flare, and we'll get onto double flaring towards the end of the video. Once you've worked out what length of pipe you need, you're going to need to cut it. Now, this kit comes with this style of cutter, uh, which is anyone who does plumbing has probably seen before, and uh, you can get the smaller ones. Um, both do the same job. You just need to clamp your pipe into your cutter very gently, and then just rotate it. Each time you go around, tighten it very slightly. Patience is key on this one for a nice clean cut. A little tighten each time. Easy as that. Once your pipe is cut, you need to clean off any flash. So I just use a needle file to gently clean the inside edge. Make sure there's no uh, bits of copper there sticking out. Uh, gentle file on the end. Remove any flash off there. Now I've seen people um, chamfer this edge, but I don't think it's necessary. I've never done that. Just a case of making sure there's no uh, flash on there. Just nice and smooth. Um, especially important, <laughs> make sure there's no bits, um, especially if you attach into a servo because you can ruin them with the bits in the oil and you should be good to go. I recommend making your pipes up on the bench wherever you can. So get your um, pipe clamp and pop it in a vice or something to hold it steady. It's far easier to do it when this is held still um, than it is trying to d hold this steady at the same time as all the other bits and pieces. Um, it just makes it a far easier job. So get your pipe any more of a curve than this and you're going to struggle to get your fitting on. Uh, so the 10's gone because they're shorter but the longer ones get stuck. And you need a bit of length on there to, to clamp into the actual pipe clamp here. Um, I actually highly recommend, if you can anyway, is have a nice straight piece. The reason being is when, once it's clamped up in here, you ideally want that to be straight through and not bent in any way because we're going to crush the pipe and we want it to crush straight down in a nice straight line. If it's to one side and slightly bent, you tend to find the end will actually flare, but it'll go a bit squiffy to one side um, and that's not ideal. Grab your straight bit of pipe. Don't forget to put your fitted on. You would not believe how many times I've crimped these things and forgot to do that. And um, pop it into your pipe clamp. Just gently clamp it. Uh, grab your die. Uh, this one is the 3 16 one. So make sure you use the right one. And we're in the 3 16 hole on here. Now the die has got, it's kind of made in three sections. You've got a big fat bit at the bottom there. Uh, you've got another middle section and you've got the bit which sticks into the pipe. Um, and the amount of pipe that sticks out of here must be exactly the same depth as that first fat part on the die. So pop your die against the edge of the clamp and then just pull the pipe back through until it's sticking out exactly the same amount 
as the, uh, the thick part on the bottom of the die and just nip up, double check it. And you're more or less good to go. Now, if your pipe is too long here, you'll find that it'll, it'll crush, but then it'll go to the side a bit because there's too much pipe stuck out to actually crush all the way down. Um, so you end up with like a, a wonky crush and it just, it just doesn't work. And if you've not got enough pipe stuck out here, um, obviously you're not going to get a, a fully formed flare on the end. Um, so yeah, be very, very precise about that and you shouldn't have any trouble. Next, you want to get your die, turn it round and pop it in the end of the pipe there. And grab your, well, I'm not sure what they call this. It's kind of like a puller tool. Pop it on the end there. Now, when you're popping this on, try very hard to make sure that it's nice and central on the back. So the, the puller tool part is nice and uh, central and square to the, to the end of the pipe. Hold it all steady. I recommend you keep your handle in the middle and just tighten it up. It's not too hard. Just keep tightening until it's all crushed up. Then you can extend your handle and give it a last crank. I find if you extend the, can the handle at the start and have it full length on one side, it tends to go one to one side slightly. Um, so just keeping it in the center there just helps the initial crushing, making sure it goes on straight. Ah. Nice and tight. When you take the pipe out of the clamp, you'll have a load of damage around here, but don't worry about that. The fitting covers it. So long as the end is nice and smooth and round, uh, you shouldn't have a problem. And you'll have a single flare that looks something like that. If you're using a more modern fitting like this 8th inch NPT, um, it kind of works differently. So this actually seals in the thread itself, the thread seal. Um, so tape the thread on there. Um, and this converts so you can screw onto it from the, the back with, I'm not sure, some kind of more modern fitting, which I don't have. Now we're crushing and making our own pipes, so we have to have something that fits over that um, convex ball shape you can see in the end there. And for that, you need a double flare that looks like that, which goes over that ball shape. And then you can put your fitted in, assuming, of course, it's the right one, which this one isn't. Now, just to know, if you do want to do something like this, this particular fitting is useless for it. There's not enough thread on there. Um, so you've got about five mil on the end of whatever you're working on. Um, and there's only about five mil of thread in there. So this particular fitting isn't appropriate for doing this job. Um, but say the, the ones I've used, I had to buy um, basically the same as this with a longer thread so you can convert easily. So we're gonna convert our single flare into a double flare. So normally you wouldn't take it out the clamp. So it's gonna pop it back in again. Make sure it's in the right place. Now take our tool, pop it in there. Now this time we have no die in place, so we're just gonna use the shape on the end of this tool to form a double flare um, on the end. So just nip it up again. Make sure it's nice and central. Got a bit of crank in this one. There we go. That's as much as I can tighten it. And now our single flare is a double flare. Easy as that. Hope that helps, guys. Take care. Bye bye.